Does Black Manta exact revenge on Aquaman? Did Aquaman 2 deliver the ending that the DCEU deserved? Welcome to Splash Talk. If it's your first time tuning in, or if you're a returning viewer, welcome back, Splashers. I watched the Aquaman 2 movie. I wasn't disappointed, but there were many elements that could have closed out the DCU a lot stronger. Aquaman starts off showing that he's a family man and that he is raising a newborn son. Aquaman still doesn't enjoy being king, but he does it to protect his people and to help the Atlanteans have peace with the human world. Jason Momoa's personality comes out a lot more in this sequel. If you're not a Momoa fan, then this could be bad for you. Many scenes you will see him being goofy, lighthearted, and just overall crazy, which if you know the actor, Jason Momoa, you can see that this is part of his personality. He acts like this on a day-to-day -day basis. Yahya Abdul-Mateen plays Black Manta's role exceptionally well. He strengthened his portrayal of Black Manta from Aquaman 1 to 2. His hatred towards Aquaman shines through in this performance, and in case you are unaware of where the hatred stems from, Black Manta's father was murdered by Aquaman in the first movie. Black Manta ends up looking for Atlantean technology so he can repair his suit, which allows him to be able to fight Aquaman. In the first Aquaman, you discover that Black Manta's suit is a specialized diving suit outfitted with Atlantean technology used by David Kane, who is also Black Manta. In search of materials to be able to repair the severe amount of damage inflicted on the suit by Aquaman, Black Manta has Dr. Steven Shin searching for different locations locations where there may be Atlantean technology. Dr. Steven Shin is played by Randall Park and his role has expanded from the previous movie and his dry, quirky, personality is thoroughly exposed. Dr. Shin actually finds a cave in the middle of a frozen tundra. When Black Manta and his team descend into the cave, they discover an ancient abandoned Atlantean city. The sea creatures in this city attack the people and Manta discovers Atlantean technology that he was so desperately searching for. In this city, an Atlantean ship and a Black Trident are discovered. The Black Trident is possessed with the spirit of King Cordax. King Cordax is King Atlan's brother and this trident provides Manta with immense dark power. Manta is able to use the tech that he finds to repair his suit and pursue his ultimate goal, destroying Aquaman. The ship that is discovered by Manta and his team runs off of a special fuel called Orichalcum. This Orichalcum is ancient and has been stored away for many years by Atlantis, and Manta and his team go to break into Atlantis to steal the Orichalcum from one of their deep underwater storage facilities. Manta is using the Orichalcum to release the gas into the world and destroy the world. This is where the first fight takes place. They're trying to escape with the Orichalcum, Mera, and Atlanta attempt to stop Black Manta. Mera is scorched by Manta's laser eyes and is severely injured. The actor that plays Mera is Amber Heard, and she has very few scenes in this movie after the whole situation with Johnny Depp and the lawsuit, which she lost, by the way. You see that Mira's shown injured and she has severe burns across her. Aquaman arrives enraged at the sight of Mira being injured and he attacks Manta. He has to make a decision whether he wants to fight Manta or if he wants to save citizens of Atlantis because Manta ends up destroying this train system that's running through Atlantis and the train is falling fast. What decision does Aquaman make? He decides to save the people by stopping the the train. This fight scene is short-lived and it keeps you wanting more because their fight dynamic is actually pretty good and this keeps you on the edge of your seat waiting for the next battle. Orm, Aquaman's brother that was locked away by Aquaman in the previous movie, is needed to help find Manta. Orm and Manta were previously associates. When Aquaman arrives to Orm's location, he finds him completely emaciated from starvation. He looks just like the caveman from the Geico commercials. The two of them end up escaping from the prison in the desert and are being chased to the ocean where Orm regains his form from the water revitalizing it. Once they return to the sea, they head towards the sunken citadel. Also, why is everyone in this movie's hair just moving so much underwater? I'm very confused. But anyways, the brothers arrive at Kingfish's place and they try to negotiate finding out where Manta is, but Kingfish gives them a lot of pushback and then Aquaman ends up taking it into his own hands, ends up beating his guards up, puts him inside of this helmet for underwater scuba divers, and he starts to suck the water out from Kingfish's head. Kingfish ends up giving up Black Manta's location, which is Devil's Deep. Upon arrival, the two of them see that the nature on the island is chemically altered from the orichalcum gas that is being released into 
the atmosphere. This gas being released into the atmosphere is causing everything to be oversized. So there's giant flowers, huge butterflies, and then there's a giant rat that's laying dead. And they notice that the rat is still being eaten. So now when they're looking around and seeing that the rat is still being ate, they're trying to figure out what's eating it. All of a sudden you see these giant grasshoppers going over the top of the body of this dead animal. Now those grasshoppers are chasing Aquaman and Orm across the island. They end up knocking over this statue and crossing across to a different side of the island and the grasshoppers aren't able to cross over because they push that back off the ledge. They finally arrive to Manta's lair. The real fight begins with Orm and Aquaman partnering up to take out Manta's henchmen and face off against Manta. Orm is warned by Aquaman not to engage Manta alone because of his newfound strength but Orm disregards the warning and Manta hits him so hard he flies to the ground and slides across the room. This fight is action-packed and enjoyable. It's actually one of my favorite parts in the movie because there's a lot going on here. There's multiple parts of the fight that happens. You'll see Manta shoot a laser beam out, knock them to the ground. Orm ends up fighting one of Manta's sidekicks and he's doing that part of it. Manta's looking in the mirror and you see that he's possessed by Kordax. Kordax is telling them that he needs the blood of an heir of the Atlan to be able to get him out of his prison. So when he figures this out, you'll see that Manta now decides to go seek out Aquaman's son. Aquaman Jr., the son is kidnapped by Manta, and in the process, Manta nearly kills Aquaman's father. This is the third and final scene that takes place on Antarctica, where Manta is destroying the polar ice caps. Aquaman uses his sonic powers to communicate with the sea creatures and make a giant sonic wave to destroy Manta's team, including the ship that he found in the ice cave. Kordax's undead minions fight against the Atlanteans, and Manta works to free Kordax. Orm turns a new leaf and helps King Nereus from the monster in the ice cave. Manta attempts to sacrifice Junior and free Kordax from the ice prison. Aquaman comes just in time to stop him in his tracks. The Black Trident ends up being knocked to the ground by Aquaman. Orm ends up picking up the Black Trident and he ends up being possessed by Kordax. Aquaman's blood ends up being spilled in the cave so it allows the ice to start melting so Kordax can free himself. During this fight, Manta ends up falling through a hole in the ground and Aquaman attempts to save him. Manta won't accept his existence and sacrifices himself himself instead. This is where the movie ends. Orm is free to go and live out his life away from the Atlanteans that would want to lock him up again. The movie ends here and you don't really see what happens to wrap up the story but now the DCEU is ended. We're left to wonder what direction they're going to take next because we have no clue as to what's going to happen. The mid credit scene was absolutely useless and just thrown in the movie. Orm returns to the surface world and tries a hamburger based on the recommendation of his brother Aquaman. He also ends up catching a cock cockroach going across his table and he grabs a cockroach, throws it inside of his burger and eats it. So this part related to when they were at Devil's Deep the first time. Arthur, also known as Aquaman, tricked him into eating the cockroach, but when he actually ate the cockroach, he enjoyed what it tastes like. They put this in the mid credit scene showing him eating this cockroach and there's no real rhyme or reason as to why this was a pertinent fact or a detail that they chose to play back twice instead of just leaving it with the first joke. I was hoping they were going to give us some type of closure in the mid credit scenes say something to the fact that the DCEU universe was going to be closing itself out, but really we don't find out any more details as to why or how it stopped. Overall, I would rate this movie a C. It's watchable and the fight scenes were enjoyable, but it didn't provide any closure for the DCEU. And also, how could DCU end the Zack Snyder saga in this fashion? The movie was poorly executed, giving the fans no type of closure or any ideas to what was coming next in the DCU. Jason Momoa also imparted a little bit too much of his personality onto Aquaman with all of the goofiness and the screaming. It just all seemed unnecessary. Yaya Abdul-Mateen was the highlight of this film for me with his acting skills fully on display. If it weren't for him, this movie would have been an absolute sleeper. Black Manta is unable to get revenge, but that didn't stop him from trying his hardest to defeat him. The fights between Aquaman and Black Manta were very enjoyable and kept you wanting to see more of their interactions and their clashes. The new power that Black Manta discovered when he found the Black Trident made him much more formidable against Aquaman, but in the end, the best man won which was Aquaman. Randall Parks also played his part well. He went from constructing all of Black Manta's tech 
to assist in Aquaman and saving the world. He brought a breath of fresh air to this film because his actual type of sense of humor and the way he interacts makes this a even more cohesive film, even though there wasn't much cohesion outside of him and Black Manta. By now, I'm sure that you've heard about all the stuff that was going on with Amber Heard and all of the different delays when it came to this movie because of the fact that she was going through her legal issues with Johnny Depp, the lawsuit that she put on him and him suing her. Well, overall, I feel like that had a lot to do with messing this film up and they just never recovered or figured out a way to carry out this film in the best way possible. Her role in this movie had very little significance, if any, and you won't even notice her not being involved much, which works out perfectly for this movie. And hopefully your expectations weren't sky high for a climatic ending to the DCEU. Otherwise, you will be thoroughly disappointed. There wasn't anything that told me what direction is coming, going, leaving, nothing. Overall, that would be my biggest issues with this movie. Outside of the way that the movie was structured, it actually was an enjoyable film, but I can't give it anything higher than a C because there's nothing for me to put everything together. The pieces just didn't flow. Let me know in the comments what you think of Aquaman 2. Did you like it? Did you feel like it ended the DCEU the proper way? What movies should I review next? Thanks, Splashers. I appreciate you guys for watching this review. Watch my reviews of the new Wonka movie and the Hunger Games Songbirds and Snakes.